In the previous video, we applied inference process skill to solve a number properties question. Now, let's see the application of this inference process skill on an algebra question. Pause the video to solve this 700 level question from the OG Advanced Book. Click on the information icon on the top right hand corner to submit your response and resume the video when you're done. All right, so let's solve this question now. What is the value of x? So the question is simply asking us what is this value of, of x, okay? So we're going to now talk about statement 1. Okay, statement 1 says x to the power 4 plus x squared plus 1 is equal to 1 divided by x to the power 4 plus x squared plus 1. So just make an observation here. These two terms are, these two expressions are exactly the same. So let's simplify this. Let's take this on the right hand, on the left hand side. x to the power 4 plus x squared plus 1 whole square is equal to 1. Now let's simplify this. And in this case, I'm not going to simplify by take by opening up the square because then that's going to make it a little bit more that's going to make it difficult. Observe this, x to the power 4 plus x square. I can factorize this, x square into x square plus 1 plus 1 whole square is equal to 1. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Now, I'm going to take a square root on both the sides. Now, when I take square root, I have to consider both the cases that it's a positive root or a negative root. So, let me say, x square into x square plus 1 plus 1 is equal to positive 1 or the other case could be x square into x square plus 1 plus 1 is equal to minus 1. So I need to consider both the cases over here. Okay, that's very, very important. So consider both the cases here. Okay, so here um, again minus 1. All right, now let me simplify this. This part and this part gets cancelled out. What I end up getting is x square into x square plus 1 is equal to 0. Let me do the same thing over here. x square into x square plus 1 is equal to minus 2. Let me come back here. Now, if x square into x square plus 1 is equal to 0, that means there could be two cases. One is x square is equal to 0 or this thing will hold true even if x square plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, from this one, what I get is x is equal to 0. From this one, I get x square is equal to minus 1. Okay. All right. So, um, x, x is equal to 0 or x square is equal to minus 1. Now, is there any way possible for x square to be equal to minus 1? Absolutely not. This one is not possible at all. This, this case is not possible. Why? Because square of a number is a non-negative number. This is not possible. Okay, let's, uh, okay, so now from this particular case, from this positive root case, all we have is x is equal to zero. We know have a unique value, okay? Now let's come back to the negative uh, one case. x squared into x squared plus one is equal to minus two. Now, if you think about it, x squared is a positive number. So here also x squared is a positive number and you, 1 is a positive number, okay? So, overall, this product is a positive number. Now, how can a positive number be equal to a negative number, okay? This is not possible. This case is also not possible. This means that the only case that's possible over here is this case x is equal to 0, and that implies, let's bring back, let's bring our answer choices here, choices A, or D could be the correct answer, B, C, and E are not correct at all, okay? And how did we arrive at that? We arrived at that by drawing this inference that x square into x square plus 1 is equal to minus 2 is not possible at all. We drew a similar inference here as well when we said that x square is equal to minus 1 is not possible. Okay, so again, we utilized our, and I want you to understand how did we draw this inference? We utilized our conceptual understanding, and let's write this down. Conceptual understanding of square, of square of a number. Okay, that's what we utilized over here. All right, but drawing, bringing that conceptual knowledge at the right time is very, very important. Okay, now, 
if let's say you didn't apply this influence cue, you must you you would definitely fall in the trap of this being a quadratic equation and therefore it having multiple rules. So you would have definitely faltered there. So again, drawing inferences is very, very important. Now let's take a look at uh, statement number two. Statement two says x square x cube plus x square is equal to zero. So let's factorize it. X square into x plus one is equal to zero. Now what does this mean? This means that x square could be equal to zero, one case, or the other case is x is equal to minus one. Now this implies that x is equal to zero or x is equal to minus one over here. Okay. So here we have two possible values of x, which means that this statement, possible values of x, which means that this statement is not sufficient which means that the correct answer over here is choice A. Okay, so again, observe once again how we took uh, an algebra question and how we applied our inferences, or how we applied the process scale of inferences by utilizing our conceptual understanding. And again, that concept by itself is a very straightforward concept, but you need to be able to apply, you need to be able to get that concept from your arsenal and apply it at the right time in your solution in order to get to the correct answer. And so by applying these process skills, you've been able to solve a difficult 700 level question correctly. Okay. This question demonstrates the need to apply inference process skill while solving questions. Failure to do so leads us to incorrect answer. Watch the next video to see the application of inference skill on a geometry question.